in our previous episodes, we examined how the Kenyan community has grown in the U.S. Today, in this episode, we are going to examine how the community is settling down. And to do this, we take you to Marietta, Georgia, where we join the Kenya American Community Church as they organized for 15 years of having been in existence. One of the indicators of how the community has grown is when you see people getting involved in activities that affect their lives. A perfect example is um, how this community in Atlanta is organizing for this event uh, by involving other different groups within the community, different young people, grown-ups, the elders. My name is Chris Amala and this is the Diaspora Notebook. The big day for the Kenyan American Community Church in Marietta, Georgia is fast approaching and Pastor Gigi, as he is commonly called around here, has assembled his troops. When serious decisions that affect the church have to be made, this is the group that makes those decisions. Dr. Tawaski, if you have any question, go through the minutes quietly and then we will pick up in five minutes, see whether you have any corrections to do. For now, this is the group that is charged with the responsibility of organizing 15th anniversary celebrations that are to take place the weekend of May 3rd. And we thank you God for this night, for our meeting tonight. As you continue to excite us, even as we live out the dream of the story that describes KSCC, I pray that you are going to give these your servants the energy, the ability, the wisdom, and the spirit they need to soldier on. Fifteen years are gone. The future is in your hands. And just as we have relied and depended on you in the past 15 years, you are our hope for years to come. Be with us, O oh God. And even for those that we serve, we pray that you will be accepted before you and also before them. To the glory of your holy name. For the crusade ahead of us, O oh God, as people come so that we may be uplifted together, I pray that they will come with expectant heart. The celebrations are going to be one of the most important items on the church calendar this year. And so everything has to go right because as it's always with such events, there are no do-overs, no makeovers, and no repeat acts. Yes, my name is Simon Jong and Derry. I work here at uh, Kenyan American Community Church as the youth director, a uh, position that I have held for since 2005. And uh, I love the Lord as much as I did. This is a great event that we are looking forward to for our ministry to have grown to 15 years. And uh, we are working with the youth and also working with the children uh, to see that they can celebrate this. Uh, in great event. Uh, a good number of them have been born in this country and we are raising them to that awareness of what God has called us to do in the ministry but also the awareness of where, who they are as Christians and as Kenyans, Americans uh, who are growing here as a second generation. So there is great plans for them to come out and present uh, what they have learned and also but also to join their parents in celebrating this great occasion. And that is why Pastor Gigi, as a leader of his platoon, has to sound inspiring in his pep talk about the story of their time. A story of people who know how to go through storms, a story of people who know how to go through resilience. On 4th of May, we shall tell that story. And it is very important that as a body of Christ, the team has to begin and end with prayers. The wonder story of a Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints and glory gathered by the cross of sea. 
He will keep me to the river, roses was at my feet. Fifteen years has been a long journey, as you can imagine. We began with a humble 16 members. Uh, that was in 1999, in January actually. And for the last 15 years, we've registered not only numerical growth, but also spiritual growth. It's been a journey of learning, a journey of waiting, a journey of great insight. I would like to you to tell you that it's been smooth. As you can imagine, putting together a congregation of 500 plus people and over 180 children below 18 years. It's the Kenyan church in the lives of uh, Kenyans, especially in, uh, in this country. And um, just following immediately on that, uh, how is the Kenyan American church different from the Kenyan uh, Kenyan Kenyan church? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. The Kenyan Kenyan Church mm. is more conservative. The American Kenyan Church is more liberal. They have they are forced to become even the political arena. They are the hospitals we need. That's where we gather. That's where we we socialize. So that is our social welfare body too. Because Kenyans don't seem to meet anywhere as better as when it comes to church matters. So our pastors are mediators, they are politicians, they are everything as they try to unite the community. However, we have found the American Kenyan church being a safe refuge, especially when our children intermingle together, they pray together, they socialize, they, they do activities together. We have found it as a very rewarding forum. We also have found it as a place where we can get friends because that is the only place you find many more Kenyans, especially of course if you are not young and seeking fun in the other social places, which are not also very many. Our people still tend to congregate together. And of course, you know, there are many reasons behind that. So the church has been one such place where our people can get together, plan things together, you know, help our students together. That has been our social centers. These are people who come from different background in as far as faith is concerned. And to come up with a community church as Kenyan American Community Church it's taken God to bring all those people so that you can have them as a body, as a family of faith that would call a community church. Hello? Yeah. Oh yeah, what's the dinner tonight? Oh my goodness, Ugali. Can't wait to come for it. Okay, I'll not be long, maybe after the cruise ship, nine-ish, ten-ish. Oh sure. Artificial carbon is finished. Oh yeah, last one. So it's been a journey. And on 4th of May, we are inviting people from across Georgia and across the United States of America, including people from Kenya. We have political leaders, we have uh, diplomats coming. And what we want to do on 4th of May is to celebrate, one, God's faithfulness, but we also want to uplift our cultural identity. What you've realized is that uh, even though we're in America, we carry with us our identities. We have discovered that Kenyans have taken very long to let go some of those core cultural uh, patterns that have been evidenced even in our 15 years of ministry. So it is a celebration. It's a time to look back and see God's faithfulness. I'll tell you, it brings us memories of children who have been born in this country. 
it brings memories of people who have wedded in this place but it's also bring memories of sad moments because we have uh, been able to preside over tens and tens of death uh, as a community so we also look back to see how God has helped us to stick together in terms of needs in terms of stop so it is a celebration The Jesus issue right now is how to get the community together to organize for an event that is coming up. 15 years for him is a big deal. And given that the community has grown, uh, Dr. Gigi is surrounded by a team of elders that help him put together this kind of event. And in as much as you know, there's anxiety around organizing an event like that, he knows very well that everything is well taken care of because they, the elders have met to organize this event. This is a major, major, major event and it can't be left to him alone. The Kenyan American Community Church is without doubt currently one of the largest Kenyan churches in the U.S. Plenty can be said about the road the church has traveled, but what is clear is the fact that this church fits the narrative that the Kenyan church in the U.S has come of age. Uh, there's always, of course, unity in diversity. There's, uh, when you come together as a group, yes. you, 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 you make a more, more noticeable force. And like America, the, the numbers really come. What, how, why is it that uh, Kenyan churches cannot come together, create something uh, beautiful for their people? Well, I would say this is because of self-centeredness, personal vision, and again, the thing is here, like some are building their own kingdoms rather than building the kingdom of God. So they do things their own way. When we talk about unity, unity is very important because unity will break yokes and uh, will make us have an impact to the people. We are not able to bring each and everybody together. Like I was involved in uh, bringing the ministers together, having a pastor's fellowship to pray and uh, address the issues that affect our community. But I realized we did it for only two years and after that we were not able to continue because some had their personal ambitions because of leadership. One would like to be on top of the other, others would not like to submit to one another. But we are serving God, but we are serving God where we are divided. It would be better if we come together, even though we will not be able to merge the churches to become one church. We can still serve God as a community, united, and we can address our issues, our people can come with the problems and they are able to be assisted because each and every minister has his own vision. And it is very hard for us to combine our visions together, but we can serve God together with our visions in prayer and we can still touch and have impact in this nation of America. As the Kenyan American Community Church prepares to celebrate 15 years of its existence, one of the milestones that Pastor Gigi is proud of and which he is only too happy to show 
the world is the community property. We are so blessed, Chris, because what you see, we have uh, three uh, distinct buildings here that we use for various reasons. The blue roofed building is our main hall where we have the main service that takes place at 11 o'clock. In this hall, we don't normally use it for worship, but we also use it for functions. Let's say we have dinner, we have uh, wedding celebrations, we have concerts. It's a multi-purpose hall. Uh, further on, we have a sanctuary, the red brick building. It can seat 300 members. The hall seats 500. But there we can see 300, that's where our morning service takes place. We have uh, three services every Sunday. At 10 o'clock, we have a one hour service that is exclusively English. That is for those Kenyans who wanna get away from the usual long structured service. They wanna have a kind of a taste of an American service that is just one hour everything contained one hour and that is where they worship downstairs we have our children ministry i've just told you we have about 180 children below uh, age 18. further on we have what we call a canteen after the service our young people go there to get refreshment french fries hot dogs drinks and what have you and then we have the playground we also have another facility over there. We have a guest house. We have a, a playing ground where we do volleyball and so forth and so forth. And therefore, it is a community center where you can do all those things. Primarily a worshiping center, but also a recreation center, if you may. All these buildings are not leased, but rather owned by the church. Owning property or community facilities for majority of Kenyan groups and churches in the U.S. is something that has remained an elusive dream for most groups and churches. This is in spite of the fact that the benefits are numerous, as Pastor Gigi explains. For eight years, Chris, we were hosted by a church here in Marietta. And you, when you are hosted, you cannot do everything you want in terms of time in terms of space we lived on someone else direction there is nothing as good as ownership it reached to a point where we needed a place of our own because own means several things own means that you can be uh, when and in as far as you want to be in that place, you can use facility for many, many, many reasons. After eight years and going to this given facility at four o'clock, you would not believe it. I'm sure when you visited us, we would stay at home and wait until 4 p.m. after the host church had used their facilities and had gone home. And then the leadership of KCC came to this conclusion. We will never grow until we have a place of our own. It's just like they do it in America. When your child reaches 18, 19 year old, they let them go. Because when they stay at home, they never grow. They never take responsibility. We took a little bit longer. But when it came to a point when we felt that it was God's time to go. We looked for a facility. It took us a step of faith to move from a facility where we only gave about $500 a month to a facility where we are required to pay $7,000 a month, pay $3,000 for utility, but within five years, raise money enough to get a $2 million uh, check to the owners and Chris with all humility I would say God is faithful because the minute our people moved from being hosted 
and they got a facility that they called their own. The number of attendants grew, people had more space, we were able to accommodate many activities, and from a humble beginning of 16 members, we've been able to grow to more than 500 adults and about 180 children below 18. This is what owning property means. We are able to accommodate Kenyans, not just members of our church community. If you have a wedding, if say you've lost a dear one, and you need a facility where you can meet and comfort one another or celebrate your wedding, if you have a baby shower, if you have a graduation, this facility is for the Kenyan community. And we have heard other people who don't attend this church use this place as their own. And for me, it's a joy because we are not here to serve a particular Kenyan community, but all of us. And that is why this church is interdenomination, so that people from all walks of life can feel welcome and use this place as a home far away from home. The Kenyan American Community Church in Marietta has not only just experienced growth in numbers and property it owns, it has also become the face of Kenya in the sense that it's one of the few churches in the U.S. that have embraced diversity. This rich diversity is something that Pastor Gigi is very proud of. We believe in holistic ministry. God has blessed us so much bringing us to this land of opportunity where we live in a very peaceful atmosphere, where we have plenty, where we have a lot of opportunities. And to get a facility such as this, worth over $2 million, what do we do in response to God's love, God's grace, God's generosity? After 15 years, we have resolved together and we do so cheerfully, gladly to give back to our country. Because you know what? God blesses us so that we can bless other people. And we have learned this one principle. When God has been so gracious to you, the best thing is to pass it on. We have this love from God. We have this grace from God. We want to pass it on and especially back to our motherland and therefore we have resolved after 15 years we want to put up a 35 million dollar technical institute 45 minutes away from Nairobi on your way to Machakos in Rwai and this is our vision we know there are many Kenyans who are orphaned they have no parents they died because of hunger, disease, or maybe a uh, tragedy. But those orphans are smart here. They pass exams. They are brainless. They are talented. They are gifted. But because they have no support, they languish there and their dreams are shattered. Here at Kenyan American Community Church, we have resolved to identify orphans across Kenya bring them together and offer what we call vocational uh, school in this technical institute they will come and be in school for two three years 
and graduate with the diplomas. Chris, we are disheartened. I teach at a university here, and one thing that we are doing wrong in Kenya, everybody wants to become a university. Not to belittle the degrees Kenyans get, but we are having so many graduates, Nairobi and other parts of the world, who cannot do certain things with their hands. They have degrees, yes, but they cannot go and fix a leak in a house. They cannot go and fix an electrical problem. They cannot do masonry well. They cannot be good tra truck drivers or matato drivers. We want to have hands-on skills so that after two or three years, these graduates can go out and establish their businesses. We want plumbers who are skilled. We want truck drivers who are skilled. We want nurses who serve people with some ethic and with a touch from God. We want people who can serve food. We want people who can beautify our bodies with a touch. And therefore, we want to create a school where these orphans can affirm their humanity. We want to empower them, strengthen them, equip them so that they can serve our nation. This is what God has put in our heart. This is our resolve. This is what we have decided to do after 15 years of ministry. $35,000, million dollars. It's not change, Chris. But just as we trusted God on a two million building here, we serve a God who owns silver and gold. A God who says this, when you touch, when you help the poor, you lend to God. This is our resolve. This is our next plan of action. God being our help.
So the Kenyan community in the U.S., just like any other immigrant community, is changing. Uh, it's undergoing phases, and uh, one of the things that we've realized is that now people are settling down. Um, they're having families, you know, even those the families that came here when they're young, they are suddenly finding their own families. And uh, 100 years from now, this community will be as incorporated within the larger American community like any other community. My name is Chris Amalwa, and this has been the Diaspora Notebook. I'll see you again in another episode next week.